welcome back to another Music Maker Guitar video. It's Theory Thursday, and I'm really just loving these chord changes. Ariana Grande, thank you for writing a cool tune. This one's called Needy. Um, if you haven't heard it yet, um, I don't know why you're here. But um, anyways, that said, let's go over these chord changes and melody, uh, and then you can play it yourself. If you do play it, kind of like tag me. Like, I'm on Instagram, Josh K Guitar. Uh, you know, you can, you can even like at me here on YouTube. So, um, you know, go ahead and, uh, play, play this music and, um, let me know what you think about the chords and, uh, and, uh, the melody. Do you like these things? Um, what do you think? Did you come up with some different things in your analysis? You know, like I'm really, really interested to hear. So that said, here's what I got. First chord, A minor seven flat five with the like seventh on the top and the flat five on the bottom. Then, it's actually diminished major seven, right? So I'm getting A flat diminished major seven. It's a flat five root, flat three, major seven on top. And then regular old E flat major seven. So that's like root, fifth, seventh, third, and flat to seven, E flat seven. Then repeat, rinse, repeat. Anyways, um, let's kind of go through those. I'll tell you everything fret by fret, and uh, then we'll go through some other voicings that I just happen to like for these chord changes that are fun to play with. And then let's go over this little melody here. It's mostly like E flat major pentatonic, C minor pentatonic territory. Just a couple of extra little um, side journeys there along the way. Um, but that said, um, so here's what I'm playing, and here's what I hear kind of on the recording. And actually, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, there might be just like three notes on the recording. So maybe just the top three notes. And that sounds kind of nice by itself, but I know she like adds a lot of voices in there and stuff. So I'm hearing some of these seventh chord textures personally. Um, in the mix at least uh so you know figure i might as well at least address that elephant while it's in the room um but that said yeah so here's what i'm doing uh fret 13 on the d string fret four and i'm barring that so that i can get another note later but 13 14 on the third string on the g 13 again so i'm playing those both with my first finger kind of like a little mini bar little extended double stop if you will right and then uh 15 up on top now this note 15 it's going to stay the same throughout all four chords so i like to try and keep in mind as you play these to try and really hold every note as long as you possibly can you want to stay very legato if uh if you know what that word means it just means that the notes really flow together it's not like choppy between things um although hey if you know how to do it really legato and you've decided like hey i want to make an artistic decision that could be cool a little bit more funky version of the same thing but um just whatever you want to do with that i think it's cool to be artistic with the things you know you should uh this is art after all but that said what i'm hearing on the rec on the record is like definitely more subdued legato long notes so you want to really i think that's harder to play <laughs> especially this fourth because you're going kind of from a bar to a different shape. So we'll go over all those things, but just kind of bear that in mind that you want to try and hold every note as long as you can. That's a really, really important aspect of actually being able to do this on guitar. Um, and if I'm honest, keyboard player challenge, how many of you guys think that the keyboard player is actually playing those notes and holding every single one of them? Or how many people think they're just playing on a, that sustain pedal and just like have all the time in the world to switch between notes. I think it's the second one. Keyboard players, I call you out. All right, that said, let's get back into this thing. So 
13, 14, 13, 15. From there, this 13, 14, 13, that's just gonna move down one fret. So 12, 13, 12. And again, 15 on top stays the same. So 12 on the fourth string, 13 on the third, 12 again on the second. And again, I'm gonna bar that. And then pinky on that 15th fret. So, so, so far we have. Which is such a spicy chord change for a pop song, by the way. Like, thank you, Ariana, for putting a cool spicy chord change in this pop song. Spice achieved. All right, so uh, third chord change, E flat major seven. That I'm playing here, fret 13 on the D, and then bar right across, 15, 15, 15 on the top three strings. And then finally on the E7 chord, I kind of think of it like if you know D7, like this, play that without your first finger. Then you can move it. Just move that shape all the way up to fret 13. But in case uh, you want a little more help, 13, 15, 14, 15. I have to kind of use all four fingers on that. So all together, just quarter notes actually, really simple rhythm. repeats rinse and repeat on those okay now that said let's go on to some other ones I'm gonna show you a nice really easy one that I like and then I'm gonna show you a third one it's a little bit of a finger stretcher and has some really fun stuff in it so that said one that I find sounds really full and nice although it has low notes sorry Ariana maybe you didn't want that in your song but I want other artists to be able to explore these chord changes so I'm doing it anyways uh, here is a minor seven flat five and I love this one because this puts that melody note on top, that, that, and we're gonna hold that. I might switch between G here on the third fret and G here on the eighth fret of the B string, just for convenience of being able to play the chord, but we're gonna keep that G note on top, right? So here's the chord. So that's a bar with your first finger, right? A lot of people say you can't play a minor 7 flat 5 chord with a bar, but I love this version that does have a bar. Just a little bit of extra help. So it's a barring down 5th fret, then 5th, 6th fret with your 2nd finger on the uh, A string, then bar, bar. So six, 5, 6, 5, 5, and then pinky on the 8th fret, getting your 7th there. You can actually play this chord the high E string too, but for the purposes of this song, I'm going to leave that as the high note because again, I want the G on top. Right? Again, we're doing diminished major 7 here, right? So this is A flat diminished major 7. So I have A flat as my low note. And what's really cool about a diminished major seven chord is it's really, it's actually just a major triad plus a spicy note on the bottom. So if you think G major, right? One, two, three. That's third fret, third fret, fourth fret. First string on the third, second on the third, third string on the third. Then on the bottom, fourth fret. Then I'm going to go back to this G on top, E flat major 7. That's a pretty standard shape, but it's fret 6 on the uh, A string, 8 on the 4th string, 7 on the 3rd, and uh, 8 again on the 2nd string. So I'm doing like 1st finger, 3rd, middle finger, pinky, 
And then uh, if you want, you can hit this note too, but I like the G on top, like I said, right? Then to turn that into E7, all you have to do is bar your first finger and release your set, your middle finger there, your second finger. So that's like six, eight, six, eight. Back to A flat, or sorry, A minor seven flat five. One more cool, nice, spicy thing that you can try is this one. I love this minor seven flat five voicing. More of a closed voicing. It's like root flat three flat five flat seven right but it just sounds so pretty so um we're gonna go ahead and do that so if you can stretch your fingers this way you're gonna get pinky on the 12th fret third finger on the 10th and then first finger eighth and eighth doing the double stop there on top Right? Then this diminished triad on the bottom, we're going to keep that shape, move it down one fret. So then we get 11, 9, 7. Then, keeping G on top still. So. So that's going to be 12, 10, 8, 8. Then 11, 9, 7, 8, if you can reach that. Then this one's a bit of a finger stretcher too. So that's E flat major 7, first inversion, so third on the bottom. That's fret 10, then 7th, so that's fret 12 on the D string, then a stretch down, and then there. So uh, stretch down to fret um, 8 on the 3rd string, and fret 11 on the B string. So all together. Then to get the, the um, E flat seven, all you have to do is lower this note. But that's a bit of a finger twister to just do that. So I actually just switch the two fingers. Now those are the voicings that I have in mind, but that's a really awkward change to make. That's like one of those things. If you can keep those two strings ringing, it'll sound more legato. And that wasn't perfect, but it sounds a lot more legato. So you can see if you can just keep those vibrations and the other strings happening, that'll help you a lot in this. Um, what I also do on chord inversions like that, I just keep the knowledge of like knowing what's the third, the seventh, the root, right? Like, where are those things? And then I use that as a layer for my loop. So, you know, I might do this. Right? Uh, or my... That's a lot easier to play than like I might practice this so that I can get better at the guitar you know what I mean but like I know in advance that that's a really not comfortable place to be playing so I'm just going to use the knowledge of well that's where the chord tones are that I want to hear so I'm going to play that and focus on that thing. So that's a lot, like for me, 
that's where I think about those things. And, you know, I'll be the first to say it. I don't have large hands like a lot of these, like, amazing guitar players, like Bucketheads or, or the guys like that have, like, these crazy stringy fingers that, like, you know, they can stretch, you know, a, a full octave just on one string. I'm not that guy, but I will hit that crazy chord cluster that's, like, all scrunched up. I'm that guy, so <laughs> I know that in advance, and I, I try to use that as much to my advantage as I can. Um, and that's just one of those things, like, you have to personally, as a guitar player, you have to really, really address who you are. Um, otherwise, you'll always be struggling to reach that thing that maybe you're, you're just not that thing. You're just a different thing. So um, I think it's, it's always good to embrace who you are. Um, that said, let's get into this melody a little bit. I'm going to kind of race through it because I'm just noticing how long this video is getting. Um, but basically, C minor pentatonic shape. I'm playing like, like inside of this and mostly top four strings. So that's kind of leading me from 3-5 on the D string, 3-5 on the uh, G string. Then four, six, eight, so like three notes on the B, and then six, eight on the high E. So, f starts here. At least that's kind of how I'm hearing it. I think she's got definitely a different, like, little inflection. So I might listen more and try and get that a little bit more on point, just for my own educational purposes. But that said, it's a pretty guitaristic way to maybe kind of do it that way. So that's fret 6, sliding up to 8, back to 6, to 4, then back to 6, to 4. So that's like a little bit of a tongue twister. Then on the third string, five, three, five. Right? Now here's where we're gonna take a little bit of a journey. So we get one extra note added to that pentatonic scale, uh, a little bit of a sidestep, right? So we get six, four, four, three, three. Then to the third string. Three, three again. Five on the D string, then back to the G. Third fret on the G. Sometimes I play that just as a bend. Then here, next phrase. So that's starting here, like kind of a pickup note, um, fifth fret on the D string, then three, five, four, six, three, five on the third string, four, six on the B. Then right, so that's, uh, you can also play that here. Sliding up to fret 8. I like to do it as a bend. I think it sounds a little bit more vocal to each their own. Yeah? So that's the main part. It repeats. up to the high C that's like uh, fret 8 to 6 then 8 6 4 sliding down. there's a little bit of a slide down to the 6 or you can also do like that I like to also do maybe like combination
then that repeats like the same rhythm, but change it, she changes the notes. It's not, it's. And that becomes the motif. I think this is a really good uh, lesson for motif and phrasing. Right? It's really good just phrasing, you know what I mean? That's good job, Ariana. So um, that's it. Um, That's fret 6, 8 on the B string. So like uh, flexing between the two strings. Then, same notes. Fret 7 on the third string. Then, changing that note with the chord change. So like this happens. Right? So that's when we get, again, one more little side step there. We get six, four, then eight, six, four. Repeats. Then. So that's eight, uh, for eight on the E string. Six. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Eight, six, eight. So that's six, four, six bend, six unbend, four. That takes you through the whole melody. Um, I would advise you try and play it along with her singing. See how much you can match up to it. I'm still working on that part myself. Um, but when I play these things on my own, I'm having a really good time just having fun with the melody, having a lot of fun with the changes, having fun improvising a little bit and practicing. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and play my way out. Please do like, subscribe, uh, click the bell, leave me a comment. Let me know what other songs you would love to learn on this channel. And if you want to get really, really in-depth about these chord changes, shapes, inversions, all that stuff, please visit me on the website, musicmakerlessons.com. We can also do very specialized Q&A uh, lessons there where I'll really, really go into deep detail on my answer. Um, so please do visit me, musicmakerlessons.com. You can also download a free resource packet that has a lot of these shapes already in there for you, uh, just written out. Um, I just write everything. You know, I'm, I'm old school like that. But uh, it's, it's everything is really, really super useful for learning how to do this stuff. So anyways, please do visit there and I'm gonna play my way out. I will see you.